Have you ever wondered how the clothes that you select every day are made, where they come from, and who designed them? These questions always resurface in my mind. For most people, the first time they were exposed to sewing was from a relative, a friend, through books and movies. Animated characters have been a beloved part of pop culture for decades, with their colorful personalities and unique designs that seems to captivate audiences of all ages. In the world of animated films, sewing seems to be a magical construct. The characters' background reflect their sewing skills and who they are as a sewist, seamstress, and a designer. These animated characters often serve as inspiration to their viewers through sewing and designing, starting from characters like Edna Mode. From The Incredibles is known for her signature round glasses, a classic bob, sassy yet blunt, no nonsense personality. She was created by Brad Bird and seems to resemble a well known famous American costume designer that created countless costumes for famous celebrities like Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor. Edna Mode is half Japanese and half German. We could see her wearing and representing part of her culture, dressing in red and black abstract sleeves that seems to reflect a modern take on samurai shoulder armors. She's best known as a designer for creating famous superhero suits. Being an inventor and innovator, she inspires and encourages her audience by staying innovative and to think outside the box. Her research room is her experimental room. It's where she tests out her fabrics and design. Combining her engineering skills and years of working in the fashion industry, this allows her to be more confident and opinionated on what works and what does not work, like the idea of superhero wearing capes. Mainly because capes tend to get caught in objects that later on causes more harm than good to superheroes. She teaches us the importance of selecting the right fabric, which can have an impact towards its durability and longevity. Her design featured and displayed in The Incredibles for superheroes like Elastigirl, Frozone, and the rest of the Incredible family. Her attention to details is what made Edna a great designer. She knows who she's designing for. For example, superheroes are countlessly risking their lives to save other lives. She managed to create a fireproof, bulletproof suit regardless of not knowing her client's power. Moreover, she understood that their profession can place them in dangerous positions, so it's better to think ahead and prepare for whatever is to come. One of her famous quotes she is known for for is, I never look back, darling. It distracts from the now, meaning that you'll never be able to focus on the present if you are stuck living in the past. Edna's approach is to take part in being in the lead, to improve and to make progress, learning from past experiences which help pave new waves for better opportunities to be creative and discovering better solutions for each upcoming projects. Another well-known character that has experiences in this creative field is Eudora. In the film Princess and a Frog, which takes place in New Orleans, we are first introduced to little Tiana and little Charlotte, who are listening to a fairy tale story. This is the first scene we get to discover who Eudora is as a mother, babysitter, employee, and a wife. She is kind-hearted, righteous, family-oriented, and on top of that, one of the finest seamstress in New Orleans. Eudora inspires and reminds us it is not about what you sew, but who you are sewing for. Her famous quote where she expresses to her daughter Tiana saying, your daddy did not get what he wanted, but he had everything he needed. Meaning, although her father never achieved his goal, he still had everything he needed and more. He had love and support. As the audience, you could tell with everything that Eudora does, she puts a little love into it. In the opening scene, we saw her displaying her love for those two girls into something tangible, transferring love into something she is passionate about, like her career, which is sewing and design. 
designing, she tends to focus more on children clothes. Her style that she wears is inspired by her economic status and perhaps for comfortability. We could tell that she knows how to create dresses for her client's personality. Her main reason for sewing is to be able to support her family. Eudora's main clients are from the richer side of New Orleans. With her experiences with children, she was able to gain access to not only sewing, but spending more time with her clients' children, which led her to create more children's clothes. For example, most of her designs are whimsical and royal fairy tale inspired looks. The children lines that she specifically created for Charlotte caters to her big, bright, bubbly personality with pink being Charlotte's favorite color and her status that she claims and wants for herself, which is to be princess. Eudora's sewing skills demonstrate she's not only a master at draping her fabric, but also knows when to add the right details to elevate the look and when to stop. Like the two bows that are displayed differently on Charlotte and Tiana, Tiana's looks are inspired by the 1920s low-rise dresses and Charlotte's are inspired by extravagant princess ball gowns from different eras. Eudora really knows how to capture her client's essence, making sure her clients are truly wearing the dress that she made for them and not the other way around. That's why she is a great seamstress. She knows how to collaborate with her clients to turn ideas into reality. Now, she's not the only character that can take inspiration from a book and turn it into something real. Originally from the classic Disney princess movie, Cinderella, one might know them as Cinderella's friends or little helper. Starting from the birds to the mice, they demonstrated that it takes a village to get stuff done. With teamwork, they can make Cinderella's dream work. Their sole purpose and the film is that they wanted the best for Cinderella. When performing any task, they seem to be swifty and stronger together than alone, mainly because of the sewing equipments are like half of their size. These magical creatures inspire us to recreate and reconstruct. Like in this situation where we could see Cinderella is capable of sewing but is unable to because she is too busy cleaning for her stepmother. Her sewing skills seems to range from normal to professional. This is shown when she gifted Gus Gus a mini shirt and was planning to remake and upcycle her mother's dress after receiving the news about a festive ball. Unfortunately, she didn't even start the project because of her house chores. The animals felt bad for Cinderella, so they decided to create it for her. Using one man's trash and another's treasure, they were able to complete the look. It isn't clear if they are recreating a dress from an old book or from her design. The gown is altered into an elegant soft pink with puff sleeves and several bows, which we could see this being worn in modern day. Each piece was constructed by animals, the mice calculating the measurements, mapping out the areas that needed to be cut out, sewing, pinning, and with the help of the birds draping to make the most elegant dress for Cinderella. These birds inspire and encourage us not to be afraid and to take on new challenges with a little bit of knowledge and a step-by-step -step instruction, anything is possible. On the other hand, there are four other characters that do not need to follow any rules when it comes to physically and manually creating an outfit. One might know them as fairy godmothers. The first is from Cinderella and the second from Sleeping Beauty. The main thing they all have in common is that all four seems to be seems to be wearing a monochrome robe with a matching headpiece which appears to resemble saints and all of their design skills seems to come from a magical trinket, specifically a wand. To start off, Cinderella's godmother shows up to help her get ready for the ball. Of course, you could tell just like her animal friends, she wants her to be happy and live out her dreams. That is why, in my belief, she showed up when Cinderella was in the most vulnerable state we've seen her in the film. 
crying because she wanted to have the same opportunities as her sisters. Cinderella's fairy godmother knows her, but she doesn't seem to have a relationship with Cinderella. Even in the beginning, she didn't know who she was, but could only guess which her fairy godmother guessed it for her. She appeared to know so much about Cinderella and decided to help her turn her dreams into a reality, which was to attend the royal ball. Her fairy godmother's magic wand has the power to turn pumpkins into carriages, mice into horses, a dog and a cat into footmen and coaches. She once told Cinderella, if you lost all your faith, I couldn't be here and here I am, meaning not everything is completely lost. She inspires and reminds us that even in a hopeless moment like this, we shouldn't give up because there are things that we can hold on to that can always be salvaged. For Cinderella, it was this moment. So she transformed Cinderella's torn dress. Her fairy godmother gifted her the most beautiful and most rememberable silver dress. Even though the volume of the dress increased, we notice that the neckline and puff sleeves closely resemble the base from the pink dress, so it's not a surprise that she was able to create a sparkly silver gown with matching glass slippers. Although we didn't see her sewing skills, we could only guess where the fairy godmother might have gotten her designing inspiration from. Sharing similar power with Cinderella's godmother and Sleeping Beauty, Aurora's story has some vast differences. Her fairy godmother inspires us to create and wear something that will be memorable for these special moments. In Aurora's story, she was captured by Maleficent that on her 16th birthday, she was to fall into deep slumber which she could only be awakened by a true love's kiss. Her fairy godmothers at the time raised her and decided to celebrate her birthday by giving her a surprise party. Each decided to separate their task for Aurora's birthday. For the party, they needed a cake, which Fauna and Green Bake and Mary Weather and Blue made sure that the place was, you know, all cleaned up and tidy. And Flora decided to hand sew a dress for Aurora. Flora's witty and yet the most responsible out of all three. Her skills as a sewist, as we saw, are at mere beginner's level. She doesn't seem to understand how to properly shape the fabric. And it doesn't help that she isn't using the right size dress form. Even the placement of the bow and stitchings were oddly placed. She herself knows that something doesn't seem to look right. Since they do not possess the skills to execute each task, they all decided to use their magic wands to create the outcome they were expecting. Same as Cinderella's is a combination of wand words and motion with a flip of their wand they can practically make anything happen the off the shoulder flowy gown became a popular conversation to viewers about whether the dress should be blue or pink since flora made the dress she gets to decide but of course she will not be the one wearing it so the best bet is to make two and ask aurora to select Here's other videos that go more in depth related to the topic. Another character that uses a magical trinket to transform in outfit would be King Triton, using his trident to create a sparkly dress for his daughter, Ariel. But since there weren't any intricate details or a long scene related to his creation, we will not be getting into it. On the flip side, another character we will be discussing about their creative process and how he inspires is none other than the Grinch. The Grinch in the 1996 version is a classic Dr. Seuss character. He is known for being grumpy and a green furry creature that despises Christmas and the joy it brings. He tried to make it his life work to steal Christmas from the people of Whoville. To achieve this goal, he decided to create a famously well-known suit. The sole purpose of his design is to disguise himself as Santa Claus to steal all the Christmas tree, the presents, and any designs decoration related to 
Christmas. With the help of his minion, Max, he decided to make the classic red suit. In the process, we can truly see how he treats Max to accomplish his work by using him as a dress form, having him hold the pens while he is hand sewing, and most importantly, having Max use his paws to pedal on the sewing machine, which he clearly could have done using his legs. The sewing machine that he sews with, sews from left to right, is oddly different from the sewing machine that is commonly used today that operates up and down instead of side to side. The Grinch and Max sewing skills is normal to professional. They both can probably recreate any design as cosplay, both inspire us to not be afraid to try something new. And out of our character, honestly, their costume was so great that the characters from Whoville really thought he was Santa Claus, which in some way the Grinch at the moment brought joy to the children of Whoville without even realizing it. Even after stealing everything, they still managed to find happiness with what truly mattered, which was the hearts that they touch and the people we care for. Now, these are the characters that inspire us through their creation from sewing and designing, each exposing us to something we weren't aware of, from Edna educating us about selecting the right fabric, to Eudora reminding us with a little bit of support and love, anything could turn into a masterpiece. Even animals from Cinderella encouraging us to keep challenging ourselves and a fairy godmother demonstrating to us every single moment we should strive to make them memorable. Lastly, the Grinch encouraged us to explore a different side of ourselves we didn't know existed. They persuade us to stay creative in any form of way we enjoy to express ourselves. If you enjoyed this video, please like so I can create more videos like this again. And if I missed any other characters, feel free to share your thoughts by commenting down below. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Actually, if you stayed all the way, you might as well subscribe. <laughs>